Hello, my name is Ben Davis and welcome to this digital photo tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to give your portraits that glossy magazine look using just the tools available in Lightroom. I'll be demonstrating various techniques that will give your people pics a more flattering finish, such as smoothing the skin, removing blemishes or stray hairs, and adding extra shine to our model's eyes. You'll need to have a raw file to work on, so if you don't have one handy, we've included the file becker.dng in the Start Images folder. To get going, you need to import your file into Lightroom if it's not already there. To do this, you can simply click the Import button at the bottom left here, or press Ctrl, Shift and I on your keyboard. Then you need to navigate to where your file is located, and mine is in the Start Images folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go there, yours will be somewhere different. So we're looking for becker.dng, make sure it's ticked, and then click Import. Once it's in, just click on the file, and then click on Develop to enter the editing module. The first thing I want to do in the develop module is scroll down to the lens corrections tab and just open that one up. And I'm going to tick in the basic part of the lens corrections tab, so go into there, tick enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. And that's just going to fix any distortions that were captured by the lens. And then go over to profile and check that Lightroom has detected the correct lens. And you're looking for the Sigma 85 1.4 if you're using the start image. If you're using your own uh, file, then this information will most likely be different. Okay, so the next thing I want to do to really start this picture going is to go back up to the basic tab, that's the one at the top there, open that one up, and I'm going to start with the contrast slider. I'm going to take the contrast down in this image, I'm going to take it down to about minus 45, just to start reducing those shadows, because they're quite unflattering, they can be, and I want to bring back some detail that we can then play with as we process this picture. So the next thing is the highlights and shadows, and I want to get the most amount of detail I can, so I'm going to take the highlights to minus 100, and the shadows to plus 100, and that's just going to bring back the most amount of detail we can in those areas. The next thing I want to do is the whites and the black slider, just to fill out the histogram there, to set the white and the black point. If you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard as you move these sliders, you'll see a clipping mask. So if you do that, it'll go black, and as I start to move it up, I'm going to set this round about, just starting to poke through a few colours there, so I'm going to take that down to round about... 40 somewhere like that so it's quite nice and bright I can see the histogram there it's almost touching the end and then with the blacks slider I'm going to take this down as well just to fill in those blacks a bit and I leave it set there around about minus 40 and once again if you press alt on the keyboard you can just see where some blacks are clipping and that's fine that we lose that detail in those very dark shadows in there then below here we have these present sliders. I'm going to set the clarity slider down into the negative values just so I soften up the image to reduce that contrast on those edges of midtones and it gives less of a gritty look, more of a soft look, which is more flattering for portraits. So I'm going to take clarity down to around about minus 40, quite far. Leave it set around there. And then the vibrant slider, I'm going to increase this just a smidge just to boost the more subtle colours, the softer colours in the shot. So I'm going to leave that set around about plus 10. And then the saturation controls all colours, especially the more vibrant ones. So I'm going to take that down to around about minus 10 just to soften things off a little bit and not get too intense with the colours. To adjust the contrast and the colours a bit further, we can do that in the Tone Curve tab, which is the one down below. So if you open that one up, and if your Tone Curve looks like this with these sliders, click this icon here. This allows you to manually edit the point curve, so you can click and drag this line to shift those tones around. What I'm going to do to start off with, I'm going to click in the middle of the line to add a control point, and I'll add another control point here where these two first quarter lines cross down in the shadows. And then I want to lift this far edge of the tone curve up a little bit, about halfway to that first quarter line. That's lifting these blacks. You can see on the histogram there that we're just shifting everything in a little bit. And then here in the shadows, I want to pull these down a little bit just to add a bit more contrast in there and darken some of those tones. Something like that looks great. And then that's with the channel set to RGB, by the way. So make sure it is set there before you do this. I'm going to change the channel now to the blue channel. So I'm just going to be affecting the blues and I want to lift up the edge, the black tones here, just to add a bit of blues to the dark tones, and you can see how that's affected the background a little bit. And I also want to pull down a little bit to take the blue out of the highlights, and that's going to add a bit of yellow, a bit of warmth to our skin tone. So I'm going to leave that set there. I can enhance this effect further with this sort of uh, blues in the shadows and the warmer tones in the highlights down in the split toning tab. So if you just scroll down a couple and pop that one open, and then we have the highlight slider here. We've got this hue slider, we can add a tint uh, to the highlights. And I want to add a slightly warm one, so I'm going to set this somewhere around about 
38 or so you can see nothing has happened in here because this is still great because my saturation slider is still at zero if i drag this all the way you can see this really sort of warm gold color there but i don't want it at 100 i just want a little hint of color coming through so i'm going to leave it set at 20 or thereabouts down with the shadows again I want to add a nice blue tint, a cool one, to that area. I'm going to set the saturation slider to start with, just so I can see the effect that we're going to have. The Currently, it's sort of a red value in the hues. I want to set this all the way up to around about 200 or so, 205, just to get a nice soft blue in there. And then here we have the balance slider. This controls the, the priority between the highlights and the shadows with the split toning. And I want to add a bit more to the, the shadows, to the blues. So I'm going to take the balance slider down to around about minus 60, somewhere like that, just so we have a bit more priority uh, with the blue tone, so it's affecting the background, just to give that a bit more of a slaty kind of color. And you can see the effect this has, if I just toggle this tab on and off, you can see the difference in color toning that we've got, just for that little subtle adjustment with those sliders there. And now that the color palette has been set, I want to start using the tools that Lightroom has got that allow you to give your picture that glossy magazine look. I'm going to start with the spot removal tool. It's actually designed for removing sensor dust spots, uh, but we can use it to clean up any sort of stray hairs, little blemishes on the skin, things like that, just to give it that sort of glossy fashion look. So you can press either Q on the keyboard for a shortcut or select the tool there. You want the brush set to heal. So rather than clone will be copying pixels exactly and pasting them in, whereas heal will be a much sort of softer approach which sort of blends them in um, and it's much more subtle. So we want the brush set to heal. The size, we're going to adjust the size as we go along depending on the area that we're wanting to paint over. Feather, leave it set to 24 and opacity to 100. I want to zoom into this image, so I'm going to press Control and plus on my keyboard just to zoom in and once again so just hold down the space bar on the keyboard, you get this hand and you can click and drag and move the image into position. I'm going to start off, I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse just to adjust the size of this brush here, just to get it nice and small. In fact, I'm going to zoom in once more using control and plus on my keyboard and then holding down space bar just to drag us into place. Now there's some very, very slight wrinkles under the eyes here, so I'm just going to remove these just by painting over with this spot removal tool clicking and dragging my brush across there and Lightroom has automatically detected an area to copy some pixels from and in this case Lightroom's made a mistake we don't want to copy there it's taking it from over the hair uh, so if I use the space bar just to drag again and I can click on this pin here and then change the source area and I'm going to put it just underneath so we're very close by so it's the same skin tone same lighting and color and just to copy in there and we've just smoothed over that little wrinkle and then once again I'm going to do it with this line here under the eye and again Lightroom hasn't got it quite right sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't it's not perfect so you just click and drag that pin just to move it somewhere in place just to get rid of that now then you can take your time with this removing any sort of items from the skin that you want to cover over uh, you can also do it just by clicking say there's a little pimple or something like that uh, clicking once and lightroom will again just choose an area to paint in from and then if you're not quite happy you can just move it up like that like we did before and there and again just move it if you want to have a different source area just so the pixels blend in a little bit better. Now I'm just going to zoom out once just by pressing control and the minus key on the keyboard and I'm going to scroll up to the hair area and you can see we've got a few stray hairs just poking out from the side of the head and you can do this the same way so you just paint over the hair like that and Lightroom's chosen an area that looks good to me and again so you can just go around and choose these bits now that's a bit probably far away so the tone is probably going to be a bit different so I'm going to click and pull that in a bit closer something like that you'll want to take your time as you work around your subject and just painting out any of these areas and it's going to take me a good few minutes doing this so I'll join you again in a little while Hello, welcome back. You can see my image on screen, all these pins are indicating all of the areas where I've used the spot removal tool with a heel brush just to cover up any little blemishes and things like that. And once you've finished taking your time doing this, and it is worth taking your time just to carefully go over everything, just to check there's any little bits uh, here and there. Once you're finished, just click done to exit the tool. And if I zoom in, you can see that things are still looking pretty natural but we've just helped to get rid of a few of those temporary little blemishes. The next thing I want to do to start enhancing this even further is to use the adjustment brush and we can do a variety of things with this. I'm going to start off by clicking on the adjustment brush here 
Now Lightroom comes with a number of presets. If you click on this effect drop down menu here, further down you'll find soften skin. You just click on that one, you can see the uh, sliders are set to clarity minus 100 and sharpness up at 25. You can just increase the size with your mouse once again or scroll a bit further down and here you have these brush controls. I want a bit of a feather on the edge of my brush, something like around 55 or so, something in there. Something got a bit of a soft edge to it. I'm going to leave flow set to 100 and density set to 100 as well. I also want to tick auto mask. So that's going to detect any strong edges and not fill over the edge. So if I start painting and then I'm around this area, it's not going to start smudging in over the lips, hopefully. If it does, you can use the erase brush just to delete that bit where you've painted over. So I'm going to start up here, perhaps just start up with the top of the head. I'm going to start just painting in over there. Now to see where you have been, press O on the keyboard to get an overlay and you should have a sort of a red area come up like that and that's just showing you where you've been. So you can adjust the size of the brush as you go around to fit in smaller gaps. So I'm going to paint all of the skin and what's it's going to do, this is going to soften it up a little bit, just removing a little bit of that texture just to give it a bit more a softer, more flattering look. So I'm going to just paint in all the way here, avoiding the key parts of the features because you want to keep those sharp with detail. So just hold down the space bar on your key keyboard and just shift the image up just to move around it and then just carry on painting as you go just in there just dragging the brush and perhaps make the brush a little bit bigger just to speed up these areas just cover in all of the chin and jaw and then perhaps make the brush a little bit smaller as we go around to this side of the face and just the tip of the nose and in there and just quickly paint it all in you can perhaps take your time a little bit more than I'm doing just to make sure it's a little bit neat and you're covering up all of those areas and once again just make sure I've got these bits painted in here so we've got a nice fairly neat mask in there and again if you want to you can scroll down and do any of the parts sort of um, arms, shoulders, uh, neck, anything like that that you want to soften up I'm just going to zoom out and do this a bit quicker just pressing control and minus on the keyboard there we go so I'm just going to quickly, with my brush, loosely paint all the way down there, across the skin and across the arm there, just to smooth it all out a little bit. And if you do make a mistake and go over something you don't want to paint, you can either change the brush to erase or hold down Alt on the keyboard and you get an erase brush. If I just paint that down there, you can see that once Lightroom catches up, it's being removed. There you go, I've painted it out so that we, now that there's no overlay mask there, that's showing us where the effect's taking place. Now that we've taken that out, it's not happening in that area there. If you want to add it back, just simply paint over it once again, just like that. It's ever so easy. And then if you want to get rid of the overlay mask just to see what it's looking like, just press O on the keyboard once more, and that's just going to toggle that on and off. So if I zoom back into the face area, let's have a look. We can see the effect that we're going to be having and I'll toggle this effect on and off using this little button here and you can see that the uh, there we go it's been turned off you can see it's fairly subtle to the skin I'll turn it back on again there you go and off again so it's just helping to soften up the skin remove a little bit of detail just to give it a bit more of a, a flattering finish now the next thing you can do with the adjustment brush so scroll back up to the top of the controls to have a new brush click new there you go, that's all you need to do. And then I want to also use another of the Lightroom presets. And here we've got Iris Enhance. And that's going to help pick out extra color in the iris, just to make those gl eyes glow a little bit. You can see on these sliders here, we've got exposure is up to 0 0.35, just to brighten them a little bit, and the saturation to 40, just to give it a bit more color in there. So to make sure I'm doing this neatly, I'm going to zoom in, Control and Plus on the keyboard and then just drag myself over to get my eye in the middle I make my brush a little bit smaller with the scroll wheel and just paint around there to see where I've been I'm pressing the O key on the keyboard to get the overlay and when Lightroom catches up it will show us there that's great and I'm going to move over to the other eye and do exactly the same thing and just paint that in there that's why we've got the auto mask button ticked so you can see on the edge of this eye here and this eye it's not gone over the edge it's detected that uh, strong edge of the iris and it's only painted the effect in there that's why we want auto mask turned on now I can also improve these eyes a little bit further by adding extra sort of contrast and sparkle to them so click new once again but instead of using a Lightroom preset we're going to set up our own so double click 
effect to reset all of these sliders back to the default position and the first thing I want to do is just to darken the pupil a little bit because a little little bit sort of washed out because we lifted those shadows so we've lightened the blacks but I want to darken those back down so I'm going to take the exposure slider down to around about I don't know minus 50 something like that and then just paint in there and we'll go over to the other pupil on this side and with the auto mask turned on again it's detecting the right edges and I also want to lighten up the catch light as well because it's looking a bit grey we can make that a bit brighter a bit more of a sparkle in the eyes so once again to get a new brush always click new otherwise you'll be when you move the sliders you'll be affecting the settings of the pin that was currently selected which was the black of the pupil now I want to make this bright so guess what we're going to move the exposure slider up to perhaps around plus 50 somewhere like that you can paint it in and if you want to adjust it you can then move the slider afterwards so I'm just gonna tap that over there the auto mask should be making sure that my clumsiness is only filling in the inner part of that softbox reflection now then I'm gonna press O just to toggle that auto mask off so I can see how bright we're making it and if I move this slider up we'll make this even brighter I think I'm gonna go too bright there see that's quite unnatural so I'm gonna take this down to perhaps perhaps just about around about one something like that just to make it nice and bright okay so the other thing I want to do with the adjustment brush is add a bit of local sharpening you can do this over to the eyes and perhaps the mouth as well so once again click new double click effect and increase the sharpness to perhaps something like 30 something like that just a subtle bit of sharpening I'm going to increase the brush size with my scroll wheel and then zoom out a little bit control and the minus key just so I can get both eyes in one shot and just simply roughly paint over there and over that one let's turn the overlay on just to have a look see where it's filled in I might want to turn auto mask off for this one no I'm happy with that that's fine and then down to the mouth let's make that a bit sharper as well just so it stands out nicely against the softened skin now then while I've got the adjustment brush out we can also use it to dodge and burn and that's going to allow us to selectively make some areas brighter and some areas darker so we can really can control the contrast and also improve the sort of the contours of the lighting and also we can emphasize bone structure as well so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit of this picture just to get more of the face in the shot I'm going to click new on my brush uh, just to get a new one and once again Lightroom does have a preset for this so you can just go down to burn darken select that if you want to set it up yourself you can just simply move the exposure slider down a bit on a new brush but I want to use this one just to paint in a the darker areas just to emphasize those shadows I'm gonna start by doing the cheek here uh, in fact before I go any further with this one I want to not have this quite so strong perhaps uh, you could if you don't want the effect to be so strong you can take the flow down to perhaps around about 80 something like that if you want to just so then you can paint a couple of times over it before it becomes the full effect so we can do this a bit more gradually so we can not go too much at once and I'm going to turn the overlay off this time just so I can see the effect in real time without having the red mask showing us where I've painted I'm going to emphasize that shadow there as well and then also to improve the sort of contours of the lighting I'm going to just paint over the darker areas uh, on the skin as well see on this sort of shadow down the side of the arm I'm going to emphasize that just by painting down there and up there a little bit and down in here and all around anywhere you want you can just those darker bits that are very subtle adjustments that are slightly darker and then I'm going to use a uh, dodge brush as well just to paint over the highlights bits the lighter bits just to uh, make them stand out a little bit more just so we're improving the contrast but we're doing it as we choose rather than using the contrast slider that'll do it all over the picture we're just choosing selective areas where we want to darken a little bit and then pick out a few highlights so you'll see the effect this has and in a minute if you just bear with me while I do a few other little bits on here and scroll up to check there's nothing up here that I want to paint in and perhaps just a little bit there on this some of these darker bits of the hair just paint in there if I just zoom out so we get the full image in the frame and I'm going to press O on the keyboard to get the overlay we should see where I have been with this uh, burn brush in a moment when Lightroom turns itself on there we go you can see all these little red patches here where I've painted it in darker now I want to lighten some areas so let's go up and click new change the effect to dodge 
I'm going to zoom in just so I can see a bit closer what I'm doing. And I'm going to start off by dodging some of these bits of the hair just to add some highlights here. These brighter bits, I'm just going to pick these out like that and on the top of the head. I'm going to turn the overlay off by pressing O once again. Now then a little bit of this top of the cheek, around that bit of the jaw, the eyes. You can go up there and the cheek. And then I just scroll down a little bit. This edge of the arm where it's catching the light, just so it contrasts more against in there, just so we build up the contours a little bit. And down there, I'll scroll down a bit further. And this lighter streak across there, we can bring that out a little bit. And even the ring on the finger, just paint over it on the top there. And perhaps even some of the way the her dress catches some of the light as well. So we'll just paint one in and another one there. And I'm going to zoom out, just so we've got the whole image in screen again. And I press O on the keyboard just to show you exactly where I've painted in. You can take more time doing this if you want to. And again, you can see perhaps some areas where I've been a bit clumsy with my brush. If you see down here, so I'm going to press the Alt key on the keyboard to get the erase brush. And then I can just paint in there just to take out that little bit because I don't want to brighten that area of the background. It's only the bit of the finger that I wanted to catch with the light. And again, up here off the side of the hair and this side just to tidy up that bit that I'm doing. I let go of the Alt key on the keyboard and I've got my adjustment brush back again, but I'm happy with all these settings. So I'm going to click done to exit the tool. Now, one thing we haven't done to this picture yet is apply sharpening across all of it. I know we did a little bit on the eyes when I had the adjustment brush, but we can sharpen up the whole picture. So do that, click the detail tab, open that one up. Here we've got this uh, detail zoom area. Click on this target tool just to choose an area to zoom in on that window. I'm going to select this nearest eye just so I can really see what's happening with the sharpening. Just click there to set that. Now we're going to start off with the amount slider in the sharpening uh, section. I'm going to move this one up to perhaps around somewhere quite high, about 90, something like that. Not too high, but just a quite high amount of sharpening. And then I'm going to leave radius and detail alone. And then the masking slider, I'm going to hold down Alt as I move this one so I can see an edge mask. Now then the black areas aren't being sharpened, the white ones are. Now then it's finally caught up my screen. The masking, I'm going to leave it set perhaps around about 80, so it's sort of the stronger edges are being sharpened. Below we have the noise reduction sliders. I'm going to just touch the luminance slider a little bit. There's not very much noise in this picture. If I just increase it a smidge to perhaps around about 15, that's just going to smooth out a little bit of that grain and help just to give a bit of more smooth finish to the picture. The final thing I want to do before we've finished is to add a bit of a vignette, just to hem in the corners of the frame and add a little bit sort of more intrigue to the lighting. So if I scroll down to the effects tab, I'm going to start with the uh, amount slider on the post crop vignette leave it set to highlight priority in this drop down menu. I'm going to take the amount slider down to minus 50. So I have a fairly strong dark vignette on our edge. I'm going to set the midpoint as well to 30 just to bring it in a little bit closer. I'm going to set roundness to minus 43. So it's not quite so round. So it's just following the edges of the frame a little bit more and set feather to 100. So it's got a nice, softer, more subtle effect. Again, you can turn this on and off with this tab here just to see quite the difference it makes. And it just helps just to give a bit more of a, a nicer, a high end uh, finish to the picture by darkening those edges just to close in around our model. Now then to see the journey that this picture has taken, you can just press the backslash key on the keyboard. This will show you the before picture. You can see where we've really sort of improved the color toning. We've tidied up various areas here and smoothed it out and sharpened others. So I'll take it back to here and now we've got this really much more sort of polished look to our picture. To finish, you need to export your file in Lightroom. That's because you've been working on a raw file. It's non-destructive editing. So now you need to create a JPEG or something else just so you lock those settings in in a new file that then you can use elsewhere. Maybe you want to post it online onto a website. You want to get a print, something like that. Whatever you want to do, you're going to need a JPEG really. So to do that, you can press Control, Shift and E on the keyboard to open up this export box here. I want to put it on the desktop. It's already set there. If you want to put it somewhere else, you can choose and navigate through to a different location. I want to give this a custom name. I'm just going to call this Becca Edit. There we go. That's what I want to do. I'm going to scroll down here. We've got the file settings under in the image format. It's currently set to JPEG. That's what I want. There are other options here if you want them, but JPEG is pretty universal. And I'm going to leave 
the quality set to uh, around about 84, perhaps a little bit higher, perhaps about 90, something like that. I'm not going to uh, resize this image. I'm going to leave it set at the original pixel dimensions. So I'm going to untick that box. And that's all I need to do. Then you just click export and the image will be then created and saved on the desktop. And that's it. It's as easy as that. It can be a little bit time consuming, a little bit fiddly, going into those fine details, smoothing those bits out. But if you do take your time, it really is very easy to create that sort of polished magazine look just with the tools in Lightroom. So make sure you give it a go on your own images and see what a transformation you can make. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.